So uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, our first speaker today is Tony Yu Ye from Caltech, and he'll be telling us about generalizing the GKZ secondary fan using Berkovich jump. Over to you, Thank Tony. You. Thank you very much, Prano, uh, for the introduction and for the invitation. It is my great pleasure uh, to speak uh, at this conference. Um, let me also share the slides of my talk in the chat uh, so that you can read the back and forth uh, as you like. Um, and also, please do not hesitate to interrupt me in case you have uh, any questions or comments during my talk. Um, so I will talk about a generalization of the GKZ secondary fan uh, using Bayakovich geometry. Um, it is joint work with uh, Paul Hacking and Sean Keel. So here is the plan of my talk. First, I will recall what is the so-called Gale von der Kapranov Zelewinski secondary fan. Um, it is a completely combinatorial construction, but it has uh, a variety of connections with other uh, geometric objects. And the next, I will talk about a generalization of the GKZ secondary fan uh, to Fano varieties. So first of all, we will be interpreting uh, this combinatorial construction of this GKZ secondary fan in terms of toric varieties, and then we will generalize the construction uh, to all Fano varieties using some uh, Bayakovich geometry. Um, and after that, uh, so this part one and the part two may seem a bit uh, uh, abstract or not so, I mean, it's combinatorial, not so abstract, but why do we consider it? So after that, I will talk about uh, our motivation. So uh, our motivation came from the study of the moduli space uh, of Calabria pairs. So it's some compactification of log Calabria varieties. Um, and uh, it's also connected to uh, what people uh, consider this family of uh, Cola, Shepard, Baron, Alexiev stable pairs. And uh, if time permits, I will say briefly about uh, the construction of the this KSBA family of stable pairs uh, over the secondary fan. So that's uh, the, actually the starting point uh, when we tried to generalize uh, this classical combinatorial uh, GKZ secondary fan construction. But I will begin with uh, very elementary uh, combinatorics. Okay, yeah, let me start. Um, yeah, so I will begin with a brief uh, introduction to this uh, classical, uh, beautiful combinatorial construction by Gelfand Kapranov and Zelewinski um, called this GKZ secondary fan. So we fix Q in Rn uh, a lattice polytop. Uh, it's it's a polytop in Rn uh, with vertices uh, in the lattice Zn. And then we consider tri triangulations of this polytop uh, with vertices um, in Zn. So it just means that uh, uh, if it's two dimensional, you think it's like a polygon and Inside you have the integer points and you connect uh, these integer points by some segments and you obtain a triangulation. So in higher dimensional, it's similar. You cut it into this smaller simplices and we obtain a triangulation of our lattice polytop. So um, there is one type of tri triangulation uh, pretty nice, called a coherent. Um, 
a triangulation T of our lattice polytope Q is called coherent if there exists a concave uh, T piecewise linear function whose domain of linearity, whose domains of linearity are precisely the maximal simplices of T. Yeah, so you can just think in the two-dimensional case, we have some polygon in the plane and we have some tri triangulation. So now uh, if we have some piecewise linear concave function over this uh, polygon and we consider the domain of linearity of our function, uh, this gives us some kind of uh, triangulation on the polygon. And all such triangulations are called coherent triangulations. Yeah, so, <coughs> yeah. so now uh, uh, let's go to the next definition. Um, let's fix a triangulation T of Q, and then we consider uh, any function from the integer uh, lattice points in our uh, polytope Q, this A, the set of uh, lattice points in our polytope to R. So we consider <coughs> any real valued function on this uh, set of integer points A. Consider any such function Psi. Tony? Yes. I think there's a question in the chat. Uh, oh, let me like take it now. Oh. I can read it out if you want. Yeah, I'm glad to take. So it says, uh, are these the same as regular triangulations? Maybe. I mean, probably it's just the different terminology. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, so then we consider uh, whenever we have such function uh, defined on this set of uh, vertices, this integer points, set of integer points uh, in our lattice polytope, then we can consider uh, the unique, um, we can consider G phi T, <coughs> which is the unique T piecewise linear function, uh, which coincides with Psi. Uh, over the vertices of T. So we already know what are the values on these uh, integer points in my polytope. Then we just connect all the values together according, according to the triangulation T. Yeah, so, okay. So with this definition, we can define a cone CT. It is a cone in R to the power A. R to the power A is exactly the space of all such functions Psi. So we consider the cone CT in the R to the power A uh, consisting of such functions Psi such that the associated T piecewise uh, linear function G phi T is a concave function. And uh, Furthermore, we ask that this G phi T, we ask this G phi T to be greater or equal, a uh, G psi T, sorry, G psi T to be greater or equal to psi. We consider uh, such a cone. <coughs> yeah, and now, uh, it just follows from the definition uh, that this triangulation T uh, is coherent if and only if the associated cone uh, has non-empty interior. Okay, so uh, here is the proposition uh, by Gelfand Kaporanov and Zelvinsky um, if we take all the cones CT for all the coherent triangulations 
uh, t of q and then we also take all the faces of these cones uh, this gives rise to a complete fan uh, in this euclidean space r to the power a and this fan is called uh, the gkz secondary fan so yeah so i hope uh, it's if it's the first time you see this may be a little bit confusing maybe i leave the slide for like half a minute uh, in case you have any questions. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, there, there's a question. Yeah. Um, can you like, give, uh, give an example of such a, a coherent uh, triangulation for a two dimensional case? I mean, if you take like a square and just uh, like take the diagonal, that is uh, that is coherent. What would be the concave piecewise linear function? I mean, you, you just uh, choose a uh, fix. The function is given by its value on the two vertices of the square and you choose the values so that the associated domain of linearity is exactly, so the function like does this. For example, on you can choose the, if you have the squares like this, you can choose the values to be like one, zero, zero, one, for example. Okay. okay. Hi, can yeah. I ask? Okay. Yes. Yeah. There's another question. What, what are the conditions under which the fan will be essential? This fan will be essential or? Sorry? Conditions? Oh, it's, it's pressed. Can you hear? Yeah. Conditions under which the fan will be essential in RA. What do you mean essential? Origin is included as the intersection of all the cones. Origin is also part of the, is, is a cone. Uh, here, the fan is a complete fan, so it's supported everywhere. The completeness, is the completeness easy to see, the completeness? Yeah, it's not so difficult, this. It's in their book. Okay. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, so this is uh, the secondary fan, and let me remark that this uh, GKZ secondary fan uh, is actually the normal fan of some polytop uh, called the secondary polytop. So in this book by GKZ, they considered both the secondary fan and also the secondary polytop. Um, so the reason uh, they, develop, they develop this theory of uh, secondary polytop and secondary fan uh, is for the study of the Newton polytops uh, of discriminants and the resultants. And furthermore, I want to remark that uh, this GKZ secondary fan is also intimately connected to uh, toric varieties and the geometric invariant theory for toric varieties. Um, yeah, it actually classifies different GIT quotients uh, for toric varieties. Okay, um, yeah, so that's a brief introduction to this uh, classical combinatorial construction. And now we would like to generalize uh, this notion of a secondary fan to more general algebra, algebra geometric objects. So here you see everything is combinatorial. I mean, it's just like polytops, uh, triangulations. Uh, so, in order to generalize it, uh, first, we, we reinterpret it as, uh, in terms of some geometric construction for toric varieties, and then we generalize uh, from toric varieties to general final varieties. Let me first uh, give our setup. So, um, 
uh, our setup is actually uh, very general. Uh, we can fix V uh, to be any smooth log Calabial variety and uh, K containing V um, <coughs> any normal partial compactification. And furthermore, we fix a regular proper map Q from K to gay bar. And assuming we assume that this proper map Q from K to K bar is a relative Mori dream space. Um, I will explain the notions uh, this Mori dream space in a moment. So it's I agree it's a bit confusing with all these notations V K K bar. Actually, they are just three. Uh, varieties. We have V, some compactification, and it maps to some base K bar. <coughs> so in our application, um, we have, uh, in our application, we will just be considering this particular case where we have uh, some funnel variety. Why? Um, with some anti-canonical divisor D. And we take u to be the interior of uh, to be the interior y minus d. Then we have the canonical bundle k of k over y. Uh, this is uh, what we apply the situation where we will apply to. And then uh, the v here we take it to be um, the canonical bundle minus the zero section restricted to u. So this will be our v. And the normal comp the, this partial compactification is just the canonical bundle. And then uh, the map Q from K to K bar uh, is the contraction of the zero section. So it still seems very, comp maybe not, not complicated, but uh, a bit confusing, I have to admit. And you will see the reason why we do this uh, construction uh, is because in the toric case uh, later it will give us back the this combinatorial uh, construction of the gkz secondary fan so so the example to keep in mind is just that we have yd uh, toric variety d toric divisor and then uh, we apply to the toric case we will we we will I will talk about the geometric construction, and when we apply the geometric construction to the toric case, we will be getting uh, this classical secondary fan. Okay, uh, so first, uh, let me explain what is this, uh, what's the meaning of this Mori dream space. <clears throat> Uh, roughly, a Mori dream space X is a projective variety such that the Mori equivalence of line bundles um, gives rise to a finite polyhedral fan uh, called Mori fan supported on the effective cone uh, in this Picard vector space. Um, <coughs> yeah, I will recall uh, right away, what is uh, what does Mori equivalence mean? But uh, what you can keep in mind is that uh, as a consequence, this Mori dream space um, is really like the perfect space for working with the minimal model program. Yeah, so Mori's minimal model program. Uh, becomes particularly simple for Mori dream spaces. Now let me uh, explain what does this uh, Mori equivalence of line bundles mean. Um, whenever we have a line bundle L on the projective variety X, we can consider its section ring um, RXL, which is simply uh, we put together all the sections of uh, uh, tensor powers of L. So it is a ring because you can also multiply the sections together. And um, if this ring is finitely generated, 
if the section ring is finitely generated, uh, we obtain a birational contraction from our variety X uh, to the to the proj of this section ring. So it's just given by all the sections of the line bundle. Now we say that two uh, line bundles with finitely generated section rings are called Mori equivalent um, if they give rise to the same birational contractions uh, as here, and also they have the same stable base divisors, uh, which means roughly that the locus where this map is not defined uh, should also be the same. Yeah, so essentially it just means that uh, um, we call two line bundles more equivalent if uh, if they give rise to the same uh, map to the if they give rise to the same uh, projective map, it's not necessarily embedding. Usually, if it's ample line bundle, we would like to say projective embedding, but uh, it gives rise to the same map to this projective space uh, <coughs> uh, induced by all the sections of the line bundles. Okay. Are there any questions at this point? What, the, what, does, that, what does that mean? Uh, the contraction of the zero section there, the G, K to K bar. We just uh, contracted to a point. Uh -huh. you take the zero yeah. section? Yes, yes. We contract the whole zero section to a point. And, and where does that come in? It comes in your application, huh? that, that uh, this, this contraction to the, the point. <clears throat> um, so, it, yeah, it's actually a, a technical, this is kind of a technical point. Uh, it's because this Mori theory, uh, it works for projective space, for projective varieties. Uh, here, all I'm explaining is when X is a projective variety. But unfortunately, uh, when we want to apply this Mori theory uh, to this study of secondary fan, we we don't have a projective variety to apply to. So somehow we are only in some relative situation, and this contraction is gives this relative Mori space. Yeah, that's the explanation. So somehow, somehow this is the construction which when we apply to the toric case, gives back what we want. Um, yeah, so, so really uh, the story started from the observation that, uh, like how do we get back this GKZ construction from the geometric viewpoint? I mean, the, this GKZ construction, as I explained like 10 minutes ago, this is a completely uh, combinatorial definition. And now we would like to give first a geometric uh, understanding of this combinatorial definition. Uh, and we came up with this, uh, we take this canonical bundle. That's, that's the way to get this uh, combinatorial construction. The combinatorial construction is not so trivial, I mean, it's also a tricky <laughs> definition. So our geometric way to recover it is based on taking this uh, canonical bundle. Yeah, and then as I explained that the canonical bundle, unfortunately, it's not projective. So in order to apply the theory, <coughs> uh, we contract this, uh, we work with some relative, uh, relative proper, relatively proper situation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so as we see that uh, here, we are already pretty close uh, to the situation of uh, like a fan, because we look at line bundles and, uh, and by this idea of Mori dream space, we have this equivalence relation between line bundles 
and this equivalence relation gives rise to some fan. So, so that will be this, um, that will exactly be the secondary fan when we apply to the toric situation. Yeah. Um, let me just give uh, some explicit descriptions uh, of this uh, fan. Uh, uh, Tony, um, yes. maybe I said this, I don't understand. So how do you get the Mori fan from the equivalence relation? Oh, you just, uh, if you have lots of things equivalent, you put it uh, into the same cone. Okay. The Got equivalence it. relation is exactly given by, like each cone gives you the equivalence class. I see. Got it. Got it. Yeah, it's really the best we can hope for. So each cone, if you look at the interior of the cone, it's the equivalence class. And similarly for the lower dimensional pieces, you also look at the relative interior of the lower dimensional cones and they also, they are all equivalence classes. Thanks. Thank you for the question. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so let me give some, um, let me give some uh, explicit ex explicit description of the cones. Just now I said uh, the cones are simply given by equivalence relations, uh, by the equivalence, more equivalence relation, but we can do it also more explicitly. So actually uh, every maxim maximal cone of this Mori fan, it's just of the form pullback of the Neff cone of X prime plus uh, the subcone spanned by exceptional divisors uh, for where x prime and f uh, is any birational contraction. So where f from x to x prime is any birational contraction. Yeah, this is easy uh, to see because here, if you take something in the nef cone here and pull back it gives you, if you take two different uh, line bundle, NEF line bundles on X prime and pull them back and add to them the same combination of uh, these exceptional divisors, uh, you get more equivalent, uh, more equivalent line bundles. And uh, similarly, any more equivalent line bundles will give you uh, same birational contraction. Um, yeah, and also we can, uh, so in this Mori fan, we have a smaller piece, uh, which consists of uh, these cones without this exceptional part. So, yeah, so if this uh, birational contraction is actually just a small modification so it doesn't contract any divisors uh, in this case we have a smaller piece uh, of this mori fan so we call it the moving fan uh, which is restriction of the mori fan to the moving cone and it consists of moving divisors uh, here moving means exactly that there are no uh, stable <coughs> there are no like device base divisors uh, for this uh, line bundle for this linear system we can always move it away in the linear system yeah so okay so uh, yeah finally uh, let me point out this uh, observation that I have already uh, mentioned several times before. So in the toric case, uh, that is if this pair yd is toric, and if we consider this uh, Mori fan for k over k bar, so k is the K is the canonical bundle and the K bar is the contraction of the zero section. If we consider this Mori fan for this uh, relative situation, uh, we obtain exactly D 
this GKZ secondary fan for the polytope associated to the toric variety. So in this way, we obtain a geometric uh, description uh, of this uh, of this uh, combinatorial construction by uh, Gail van der Kapranov and Zelewinski. Can you say a little bit about how this goes? So uh, why are these two the same? Or is it too complicated to explain? No, it, it's not a complicated. It's actually, I think the best way to see it is probably via this uh, GIT description of the GKZ secondary fan. I see. Yeah, so because in the GIT description, because the GIT already depends on some line bundle, some choice of some ample yeah. or some line bundle. Yeah, so from the GIT description, uh, it's kind of pretty direct that one can make the relation be with this uh, Mori fan. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. because I mean, <coughs> I mean, the the abstract definition of Murray fan in terms of Murray equivalence is probably not so direct, but uh, but we we have also written down all the this explicit description uh, of all the cones in the Murray fan, and uh, and and then this uh, identification is not so hard. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, for the okay. Um. Yeah. So. So somehow uh, this gives us a geometric uh, description of this uh, secondary fan. And now we can say that uh, let's just uh, take this to be, we just take this to be the generalization because now it, will, it should work not just in the toric case, but in all uh, final case. Um, but actually, uh, one can do something more interesting. So as I said, we can simply take this Mori fan uh, as a generalization. Um, however, uh, um, considerations uh, from mirror symmetry actually suggests us uh, a slightly a slight modification. So. I mean, we can contend with the Mori fan, but uh, uh, motivated by this problem of moduli spaces uh, occurring in mirror symmetry, uh, actually, uh, we can do something more interesting. So it suggests us that we can actually uh, coarsen a little bit uh, this Mori fan and obtain something a little bit more like different, a little bit different. So actually here, this is hard to illustrate in the toric case, because it turned out that in the toric case, we don't need this extra step. Uh, this extra step is only relevant uh, in the more general geometric case. Yeah, and here it's also uh, the place where uh, we use ideas from Bayakovich geometry and the mirror symmetry. So let me explain um, how this goes. Yeah, so, so the idea is that we do not contend uh, with this Mori fan description, but we want to coarsen this Mori fan uh, using some Bayakovich geometry. Um, and by coarsening, it just means that uh, we take some uh, cones in the Mori fan, we glue them together. And uh, yeah, and we obtain uh, what we obtain uh, is what we call uh, our generalized secondary fan. Okay, so yeah, so let me explain how do we use Bayakovich geometry to obtain this coarsening. So we consider um, this universal torsor uh, over K. Uh, it's just uh, we take 
uh, the direct sum of all line bundles and take the relatives back. And then we observe that uh, if we restrict the universal torsor to this uh, log color BL V inside K, uh, this restriction is again log color BL. And the next, uh, in order to apply Belkovich geometry, we equip our base field. So until now, it's just uh, everything I talk about, uh, it's over complex numbers. But now let's equip, uh, equip our base field, the field of complex numbers uh, with the trivial non-Archimedean absolute value. So uh, for any non-zero element in, for any non-zero complex number, uh, this absolute value is equal to one and the absolute value of zero is equal to zero. So once we consider the field of complex numbers uh, as this trivially valued <coughs> non-Archimedean field, um, we can take this so-called Bayakovich identifications uh, of these uh, varieties. So yeah, this identification, I mean, over complex numbers, we can, of course, do the usual complex uh, identification. But here, the very interesting thing we can do is that we can also consider the complex numbers as a non-Archimedean field, and we can apply this analytification in the non-Archimedean sense. So actually, this procedure, it's really int intimately connected to tropical geometry and and a lot of uh, combinatorics uh, happening in algebraic geometry. Um, yeah, if you never, if you never seen them before, let me just uh, briefly say that uh, uh, as I said, uh, these identifications they consists of scheme points plus uh, some valuation on the residue field. So it's kind of an enhancement of. Uh, of a scheme, you have not only scheme points, but you also consider pair scheme points plus valuations on the residual field. So this is the underlying set. And then um, you can, then we also add, we add on to it a topology uh, as well as a shift of, uh, as well as a shift of uh, analytic functions. But here, all we need is actually, I think all we need is just the set. Okay. Um, so, uh, however, here, um, T and V, they are not arbitrary algebraic varieties, as we emphasized, they are actually log color BL varieties, um, in the sense that uh, they have this, uh, volume forms on them. And once we have volume forms, actually, uh, we can construct canonical piecewise linear subsets inside these analytic, analyt analytic spaces. Um, I should say that contrary to complex analytic geometry, where you think of like complex manifold is I mean, at least some topological manifold, which looks uh, locally just like CN. Uh, These non-Archimedean variety, uh, non-Archimedean spaces, they are really complicated. The underlying topological spaces, um, <coughs> they are very hard to describe. So, but fortunately, um, Inside these very complicated uh, spaces, uh, we have some piecewise linear subsets. They are they really look like fans or polygons, and these canonical piecewise linear subsets they are called essential skeletons, and they were proposed they were proposed uh, originally by Kondosevich and Soboma and later studied by Mustata Niges and, and many other uh, 
people. Um, so uh, Temkin gave the most general construction uh, uh, of this essential skeleton. Yeah. Anyway, uh, here, if you, I mean, if you are not experts in our Archimedean geometry, probably you are not very familiar with these notions, but uh, it's, it's enough uh, for the purpose of the talk, uh, just to have a vague idea of what they are. Um, when we have, yeah, so recall that uh, this T, um, <coughs> sorry, this T is, uh, is some bundle over V. So we have map from T to V, and we also have the map uh, of essential skeletons. This skeleton of T maps to skeleton of V. Um, the claim, we claim that actually we have a canonical section uh, of this map. And we denote this section by phi. So now uh, the key idea is that, remember that we already have some generalization of the <clears throat> secondary fan or generalization of this in the toric case, generalization of the, of the secondary fan in terms of this Mori, Mori fan, but uh, we were not satisfied because of some reasons from mirror symmetry, we would like to modify a little bit by gluing some cones together. But which cones do we select? Which cones do we try to glue? So here the idea is that we glue the maximum cones of uh, this moving part of the Mori fan uh, for which the associated section phi coincide. So the idea is to use this mysterious section uh, in Biakovic geometry to decide uh, which cones we glue together inside the Mori fan. So first we do it in the moving part and then it also induces uh, a gluing outside the moving part. And this uh, gives our construction of our generalization of the secondary fan. So let me state a theorem. Um, yeah, here we described how we glue cones together, but if we have a fan and we glue, we have some arbitrary gluing of fans, uh, it's not at all obvious whether we still obtain a fan after the gluing. And uh, the following theorem uh, that we proved uh, confirms that this gluing is actually well defined. So in particular, it says that when we glue the cones together, uh, so first of all, in the moving part, when we glue the cones together, uh, we still get a convex, we still get convex cones. And second, it says that outside the moving part, uh, everything is still compatible. So it says that the gluing inside the moving part, the moving part is a smaller cone. And the, <coughs> the second part of the theorem says that uh, for the, when we have the first the gluing in the smaller cone, and then it also induces a gluing of the cones outside the small cone, outside the moving part. Yeah. So as a consequence, when we combine one and two, we deduce that this secondary fan obtained from the coarsening of the Mori fan is actually a rational polyhedral fan. Uh, Tony? Yes. Uh, is it possible to give like some kind of geometric description of what this phi this section does? Like, or is it some abstract yeah. construction? Yes, this just is, to get a better idea of what gets glued together and what, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is a very good question. <laughs> yeah, so actually, this phi, the way we construct it is by some pretty abstract uh, language 
in non-Archimedean geometry, but actually um, there's a, one way to think of it is that, um, yeah, so first of all, how do we think of points uh, in this skeleton? Um, in general, it's pretty hard, but uh, in the skeleton, we have so-called divisorial points, which are special points in the skeleton that corresponds to some divisorial valuations. In, in other words, some valuations or some norm on the generic point of the variety given by some divisor. Think of some divisor like in some compactification. So then this map phi at this at these divisorial points are exactly given by pullback of this divisor. Like you take the pre-image of the divisor uh, under the projection map from this T to V. I see. Yeah. So, yeah, so then one can actually try to see the gluing because eventually it's really all this story about the Mori fan. Uh, it's really all about these line bundles and divisors. So somehow everything can be understood eventually from this uh, I have to think in terms of how these all the divisors and line bundles they fit together. So what is V again? Sorry, so I'm just missing the picture. Uh, but what is V? Can you hear? Can you hear me? This this fee? No, no, not fee. Uh, v, the capital V. Ah, uh, V is, uh, yeah, so I can, <coughs> I mean, we have K and the V. Yeah, V is, uh, V is K restricted to the interior uh, of our final variety. So in the case of uh, toric variety, it's just a K restricted to the open torus. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, as I explained, the reason to consider K instead of just the variety itself, it's really, I mean, it's hard to explain. It's just that it's like, if we just consider the variety itself, we just don't get the K of this GKZ secondary fan. The only way to get it is to take the canonical, to take the canonical bundle and consider the canonical bundle. Okay. Yeah. So the in the in the I mean, so now I explained. Yeah, and so far I, I explained first the combinatorial, the classical combinatorial definition of secondary fan, and then I give. Uh, a geometric interpretation uh, in terms of this Mori fan in the toric case. And I also said that I also explained that beyond the toric case, we do an extra modification uh, using some Bayakovic geometry. But why do we do that? So, yeah, so our motivation actually came from the study of moduli spaces of Calabial pairs uh, motivated by mirror symmetry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so motivated by mirror symmetry, um, we conjectured, we proposed the following conjecture regarding the moduli space of smooth polarized Calabial pairs. Yeah, let me explain what are these smooth polarized Calabial pairs. So uh, they are triples X E theta, where X is a connected smooth projective uh, variety over complex numbers. Um, e is a normal E is a n is first of all uh, anti-canonical, and it's a normal crossing divisor with a zero stratum. And we assume that every piece uh, E i in E is a smooth. And the theta is a is an ample divisor not containing any zero stratum of E. 
Yeah, so maybe you wonder why we consider such complicated triples. The reason is that in mirror symmetry, we are interested in the moduli space, uh, in the moduli space of uh, Calabi-L varieties. So here we are considering, we consider the mirror symmetry of log Calabi-L varieties. But as you know, that Calabi-L varieties, uh, usually they don't have good compactifications. Um, and in order to have good compactifications, we must add some polarization. Yeah, so that's why here we have three terms. The first two terms, they are responsible to make sense of this log color BL. So we have uh, this X and E, this pair, uh, it's, it's called color BL pair. And then this extra polarization theta is responsible for uh, providing us good theory of compactification. Yeah, so that's the reason why uh, people are interested in such triples. They are called polarized Calabial pairs. And motivated by mirror symmetry, um, we conjecture that uh, the moduli space of such smooth polarized Calabial pairs uh, is unirational. So actually, uh, this conjecture um, came from a more precise form. And uh, this more precise form uh, concerns the compactified moduli space. As I, as I was saying that uh, the reason to consider these tri triples is exactly uh, for getting a nice compactified moduli space. Um, maybe I don't have much time to review all the technical, uh, all the like technical backgrounds uh, for defining the compactification, <coughs> because you know, uh, in order to get compactified the moduli space, one must allow a certain kind of singularities to happen. So, so then one must be precise. Uh, what are the singularities we allow? If you think the one-dimensional case. Uh, the moduli space of curves in order to compactify the moduli space, uh, we we consider the moduli space of stable, appointed stable curves where we must allow the no, some nodal singularities for the curve. So in the higher dimensional case, it's actually uh, it's actually much more complicated. Yeah, let me just uh, skip this. So in the higher dimensional case this uh, generalization of nodal curves uh, is, uh, is called, is developed by Kola, Shepard, Baron, and Alexeev, and now it's referred to as KSBA stable pair. And then this generalization of uh, this compactification uh, is actually given by this kind of triple where we no longer assume in smoothness, but we allow uh, a little bit of singularity uh, in the sense of this KSBA stable pair. So let's just uh, uh, <coughs> skip this. And yeah, uh, uh, and and the key point is that uh, actually. Uh, using this uh, singularity theory that people developed in the study of minimal model program, uh, we we actually obtain a very natural compactification uh, of such triples. So we denote this uh, compactification of Q by Q bar. And then uh, the precise form of our conjecture is that this now this compactified moduli space Q bar admits uh, a finite cover by a complete toric variety. So let me just remark that uh, we we made this conjecture uh, from considerations uh, in mirror symmetry, but it's kind of not at all obvious from the viewpoint of birational geometry, because although people have 
uh, been extensively studying these moduli spaces uh, in birational geometry, but uh, very little is known for this uh, for the explicit geometry of these moduli spaces. Um, we have lots of abstract general results for these moduli spaces, but in general, we really have no idea how this moduli space. I mean, what these moduli space spaces actually look like. And here, uh, from mirror symmetry, we are conjecturing that the moduli space is almost a toric variety. Yeah, and uh, and actually, we prove that uh, it's actually we check that it's actually true uh, in the two dimensional case. And for the moment, uh, we we still we are still working on the higher dimensional case. Yeah. Okay. So so finally, let me point out how uh, why it's uh, connected to the secondary fan. The reason is very simple. Here we conjecture that the moduli space is almost a toric variety, but what is this toric variety? So. Yeah, so in, in our story, uh, this toric variety uh, is exactly uh, the toric variety associated to the generalized secondary fan uh, that I described uh, in the previous part of my talk. And this also explains why we want to do uh, this extra coarsening uh, to the Mori fan, because uh, First of all, we have this uh, Mori fan, and then we look at the moduli space of these log Calabria pairs over the Mori fan, and we realize that uh, this base, this Mori fan, is actually not yet the best base uh, for the moduli space because over some strata of the Mori fan, uh, we obtain a trivial family. So now, in order to get this almost universal family, what we have to do is to contract uh, this strata of the Mori fan over which uh, our family is trivial. And that corresponds actually exactly to the coarsening of the Mori fan uh, given by the section phi. So, so once we contract this extra strata in the toric variety associated to the Mori fan, then we can show that we then actually we obtain almost a universal family uh, of these log Calabria uh, varieties uh, over the base. Yeah, so this is the the motivation, um, the motivation why we considered uh, this secondary fan and also uh, how it's eventually related to these moduli spaces and mirror symmetry. Thank you very much for your attention. Questions and comments. Uh, virtual participants, you can uh, unmute yourselves or raise your hand. Um, AV team, please enable virtual participants <coughs> to unmute themselves. Uh, yeah. Questions? I had a question. Um, oh, so uh, you said the motivation comes from mirror symmetry for some part of this? Yeah. And, uh, the non Archimedean field that you considered was C with this trivial evaluation. I would have thought that somehow the Novikov field should appear as a non Archimedean field in the story. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, here, non Archimedean field um, appears in two different ways. Um, one way is what you mentioned in mirror symmetry, we have this natural Novikov field, and that's one place where the non Archimedean field appears and the other place is what i talked about for the construction of the secondary fan and i think they are somewhat unrelated it's like uh, two places where the non-archimedian non construction plays a role but they play two different roles i see so uh, yeah. this this coarsening of the fan is not related to 
uh, studying uh, asymptotic behavior in families of varieties of these line bundles. It's something kind of orthogonal to this. It's not orthogonal. It's so the <coughs> when we have mirror symmetry, I mean, when we consider these families in mirror symmetry, we have the family and then we we also have base. Usually when we think of mirror symmetry, maybe we are only considering one parameter families. Yeah. And here we are constructing, when we constructing the mirror, we are constructing like all possible mirrors over a very big base. Got it. Uh -huh. Yeah, because you know, uh, when we construct a mirror, uh, if I start with a variety and I construct its mirror, uh, so a priori uh, for every, how can I say, if I start with a variety X and I want to consider construct the mirror of X, then fixing an ample line bundle on X corresponds to picking a one parameter family in the mirror. Right. Yeah, and if we don't fix any like ample line bundle on X, then we will give a bigger, we will obtain a bigger, we can consider like a bigger mi mirror family, which is over like all possible choice of uh, symplectic form or ample line bundle on the original variety. So now we have a bigger base. And the story of the secondary fan is about the base. And what you were talking about this asymptotics, it's maybe about the fibers. So yeah, I think one concerns the base, the other concerns the fibers. I see. Yeah. They are okay. somewhat related because if you say asymptotics, you are you are taking a limit somewhere in the base. And but the asymptotics, I think mostly it's probably still for one parameter families. Here the secondary fan is really like how we make the base better. Right. Considering simultaneously all possible uh, degenerations. Yeah, I, I mean, this yeah. really includes, I mean, it really includes all possible mirrors in some sense. Right. And yeah, and that's really something surprising from mirror symmetry because somehow when you include all possible mirrors, you get like a universal family. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. It's a surprising, I also, I mean, it's all, it's really surprising to me that, I mean, in principle, like mirror symmetry, we have some kind of duality, but, uh, but it doesn't uh, really predict that when we consider all possible mirrors, we actually get a universal family. But here, it's really kind of when we do the dimension counts, when we do the proof, we uh -huh. actually see that the mirror actually produces like a universal family. It's kind of strange. Oh, actually, I, I don't understand why it happens like this. Oh. You mean the dimension of the, the base is exactly the dimension of... Uh, no, what is the dimension count that you're talking about? What matches what? <laughs> I mean, here we really get uh, the whole moduli space. Uh -huh. The dimension, yeah. I it's see. actually, I mean, it's somewhat already in in the work of Goros, Heck, and Kyo, where uh -huh. they consider this... Uh, uh, like moduli space of del petal surfaces or moduli space of these Loyanger pairs. So they already, I mean, the dimension in, in that case, they already match. And here, what we did in the two dimensional case is like a further refinement. We studied the compactifications and so on. But in the higher dimensional case, um, I think it's really surprising that from this mirror symmetry construction, actually, kind of we get a universal deformations. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't know why. That's interesting. Yeah. Other questions? So, so this uh, this complete toric variety is projective, right? 
Sure. So, yeah. so you have various polytopes associated to it, lattice polytopes, which themselves have uh, normal, uh, which, which themselves have secondary fans. The complete torical variety is, uh, yeah. It's given by some lattice polytope, some uh, not necessarily unique. It depends also on the it, it, It's just there. given by the secondary fan. Um, right, but but then it it also has some ample line bundles which give rise to polytopes, no? I mean, you are saying like uh, we can consider a secondary fan of the secondary fan. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't know what we will get actually. Okay, no, because if we do it twice. No, uh, my, I mean, uh, my question was maybe how how does how do how do the secondary fans behave under maps? I mean, can you define a map between your secondary fans? You mean <laughs> some kind of functoriality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If like we have, I mean, from the classical construction where the secondary fan is associated to some polytope, maybe, I mean, but there are not so many maps between these polytopes. Huh, classically also yeah. yeah do you know of this classically i mean whether, whether... actually I, I never thought about it but uh, somehow it's like classically you think of map between polytopes like map between maps between toric varieties there are not so many and whether it huh. induces a map of secondary fans mm. Maybe I it's not I don't think I can say something uh, non-trivial at this moment. I didn't think about this question. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. So yeah, I mean because uh, I mean uh, the, this pro probably there is a way to think of this tropically also, right? In terms of um, oh, of course here everything is really related to tropical geometry. So these I fans, mean, the spaces they are really yes. like. And and these secondary fans themselves are, uh, in some sense, tropical varieties. One can think of them like that. This is right with some kind of weights and the balancing condition and things like this. And then, so here actually, yeah, uh, here actually, this moduli space we consider in mirror symmetry. They huh. are really constructed using all these uh, like tropical curves and so on. Okay. Yeah, wow. it's, I mean, the Bayakovich geometry and tropical, tropical. So right, I mentioned right. the skeleton, for yes. example. Yeah, so those are tropical curves or right. tropical yeah. varieties. Yeah. They yes. are really just the skeletons of Bayakovich spaces. Right, but, but, this, but, this, but your secondary fan itself, that it also um, prob can, can probably be considered as a tropical fan, right? In the sense that, I mean, there is some work of Amini and um, and and co-authors uh, uh, where they actually um, define these tropical fans and and uh, yeah and 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 I mean develop various kinds of tools there. I mean, Chow groups and so on, Chow rings, etc. Is, is it? Uh, yeah. Um. I think I heard some talks about uh, relating secondary fan. Somehow secondary fan also appears in mirror symmetry in some other way. Now I don't remember very well. Okay. Maybe Pranav remembers. I remember, I mean, I think I heard some talks also in that direction. Okay. Okay, no worries. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for the questions. Maybe one final quick question. Uh, or unless any other questions from the room or from the online participants? Uh, I had one question. Uh, have you thought about whether, you know, the, in if you apply mirror symmetry, uh, there should be some way to construct this whole story starting from symplectic geometry instead of the from algebraic geometry? Um, yeah, I mean, here, all the algebraic geometry is actually modeled after symplectic geometry uh -huh. it's really like uh, 
algebraic way of writing down all the heuristics yeah, from yeah. symplectic geometry. Right. Because you know symplectic geometry, sometimes it's you have bubbles and other issues, yeah. transversality and so on. So, so somehow here we really kind of uh, using the language of, of algebraic geometry, it's kind yeah. of one can do it in a more precise, rigorous, or maybe I should say one can do it in a more kind of algebraic way without uh -huh. uh, worrying about uh, analytic issues. So do you expect that you can start with a DG category or something, an infinity category and define this analog of the structure, this generalized GKZ fan? Oh, that's a very good question. You mean whether one can recover it from just the derived, like homological mirror symmetry? Yeah. Mm. Maybe the category plus a stability condition or some, I don't know, some extra data. I think that's a really interesting question. Um, maybe because I mean, I don't know how, but uh, if you believe homological mirror symmetry, then you would expect it to be true, I guess. Yeah, I think so. But uh, it's not really not so clear. Like line bundles or A model, B model here, how we can think about it. Mm. I think it's a great question. I have to think about it. Yeah. <coughs> Any other questions? If not, let's thank Tony again for uh, a oh, great talk and for staying up. For <laughs>